this is my first word camp. Is this everybody's first word camp? Yes. yes. Okay, so, so we're all in this together. Good. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking about WordPress.com versus WordPress.org. And this is probably the first decision that you need to make when you're looking at WordPress. You need to recognize that there are two different ways to approach it. And you need to understand the pros and cons so you can make a good choice. And if you're getting someone else to make the site for you, this is a conversation you need to have with the person who's making the site for you. What kind of site are we building? What are the pros and cons of what you're making for me? So Alex gave me a great introduction. Uh, there's not much I can add to that. Uh, as he said, I use uh, a couple of sites right now. Some are .com, some are .org. On the one hand, that means I'm completely unbiased as to which is the better way to go. Uh, on the other hand, uh, perhaps it means I haven't made up my mind yet. <laughs> if you want to find out more about me, check out my website. It's www.cobal.ca. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. When you're making a website, you need three things in addition to something to put on the site, but I'm assuming you already know what you're going to put on the site. First, you need some software to build the pages and to build the site for you. And the software we're looking at, obviously, today is WordPress. WordPress is about 60% of the market for software to run websites. The next, follow us, uh, the next biggest competitor is Joomla at just 6%. And after that, there are many other software companies that make uh, software to build websites, but I'm probably not allowed to talk about them since this is a WordPress camp. So you've got your software. The next thing you need is a host, and this is to make your pages available on the internet. A host is really just a special purpose computer that delivers the web pages. It's called a web server sometimes. And typically, you rent server space from a hosting company. The third thing you're going to need is a domain name. And domain names are how websites are identified. That's how they're found, so that's how they're searched. You can either buy a domain name, or you can share one with the hosting company. Now, it's technically possible to make a website without any of these things, but that's really hard and it's not a good idea, so we're just going to skip over that. <laughs> so as I said, WordPress is your software for making websites. And before we talk about whether it's .com or .org, let's just look at what the software is. It builds your web pages, it makes your blog posts, it's user friendly. If you can use a word processor, you can build a page in WordPress. If you know a little bit of HTML, you can use that to make your pages, to make some little customizations to it. WordPress also organizes your site pages and your blog posts. It looks after things like setting your home page and building your menus so that people can navigate around your site. It also looks after comments for you. It allows comments if you want them, and it can moderate your comments. It also sets the overall appearance of your site, and it will modify that appearance for different devices. And this is very important, because people are going to look at your site on desktop computers with huge monitors. They're going to look at it on big screens. They're going to look at it on telephones, tablets, everything in between. WordPress takes care of the, the themes in WordPress take care of rearranging your site so that it's good to read on any device. WordPress also manages users. There might be more than one person working on your site. If you're setting up a site for a club or an organization, you want several people to have access, and WordPress can control who has access, what level of access they have, uh, and it keeps track of who's making changes to pages. And finally, it organizes photos and other media that you might add to your site. You can do simple editing on the photos after they've been put into WordPress. It arranges, it organizes where they appear on pages. Do we have any questions so far? Please don't hesitate to speak up at any time if you do have a question. Do you need a high-end computer or anything? No. 
No, um, it's entirely internet based, so that the work is all happening elsewhere. You just need to be able to log into the site. So yeah, an older computer is fine, and uh, any operating system is fine. It's all browser based. You can even operate it from an iPad. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to do that, but I'm sure you can. <laughs> when you say it sets the home page, uh, I'm having trouble with someone else set up and I want to change the home page. Is that possible or does that kind of be? No, that's possible. Different themes allow you to do different things, but most themes let you specify which page is your home page. That's something we can talk about later if you like, but yeah, it's generally possible. Yes, sir? And just the organizing with photos, once things are uploaded, things are on the web, and it doesn't access your computer for any, anything other once you've up uploaded your, your files, PDFs, and pictures? Yeah, it's once you upload it, everything's accessed from there. There's no communication with your computer. 99.9% of the time. If you really want to run a website from your personal computer, you can do that, but it's a really bad idea. It's technically possible, bad idea. So WordPress is your software, but what are you gonna do for the other two components you need, your domain name and your hosting? Well, there are three ways that you can get WordPress. The first is WordPress.com. That's a complete solution. It's the software, it's a domain name that you can share, and it's hosting. It's very much like renting an apartment. If you don't have a lot of money, it's your only choice. You have the option of moving into somewhere fully furnished, and maybe it's inexpensive, so you share the bathroom, you share the kitchen, but you know, hey, it's a place to live. You don't have a lot of responsibilities, and if the stove breaks, well, it's the landlord's problem. And WordPress is a really good landlord. They will come and fix that stove right away, no problems. If you can afford it, you can rent a really nice place. Now, you can rent a place, you can rent an apartment that is so nice, nobody's going to know it's an apartment. From the inside, from the outside, it looks like a fabulous place. But it's not your place. You can't rip up the carpet and put down hardwood if that's what you want to do. You can't change the kitchen cupboards. You've got to be happy with what they give you. They can give you something really nice, but there's a limit to what you can do. WordPress.org, when we're talking about WordPress.org, we're talking about just the software. You must purchase hosting, and you must purchase a domain name. It's a little bit like buying a condominium. Price-wise, maybe not much different than a nice apartment. It could actually be cheaper in the long run. And it's your place. You can do whatever you want. You can change the flooring, you can change the cupboards, you can do the bathroom with purple fixtures if that's what you're into. The budget is entirely up to you. You can uh, do all stainless steel in the kitchen or you can get cheap appliances. But if the stove breaks, that's your problem. Nobody's going to come fix it for you. Toilet backs up, that's your problem. Now the third option is a WordPress multi-site. This is a complete web solution, but it's not supplied by WordPress. So it's a little bit like WordPress.com, but it's a little bit like WordPress.org. It's like renting somebody's condominium. You don't have the responsibility of ownership, could be a really nice place, but the rules and the costs are going to depend entirely on your landlord. You're not going to see WordPress multi-sites too often. If you're online and you're looking to set up a site, most of the offers that you're going to see are either directly from WordPress.com or there'll be companies that are selling hosting and will, when you sign up you'll get WordPress.org. Where you might see a WordPress multi-site, um, you might see an ad that says, we have WordPress sites, especially for stamp collectors. Uh, sign up with us, we'll give you a free WordPress site, and it'll be pre-configured for everything you need for stamp collecting. Something like that. They serve niche groups. In most cases, you're going to be choosing between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. And each has advantages and disadvantages. If you have no money, 
Or if you're working for an organization that has no money, well, your only choice is WordPress.com because you can set up your website absolutely free using WordPress.com. Otherwise, if you've got a little bit of money, you can go either way. WordPress.org is much more flexible than WordPress.com, but WordPress.com offers plans and services that will make it more powerful and flexible. One thing you may hear online is that you can't use uh, WordPress.com if you're making a complicated site or a large site, or that WordPress.com is only for hobbyists, um, only if you're not having your own domain name. And that's simply not true. All of the organizations on the slide there, other organizations as well, the, the National Post newspaper, those are all WordPress.com sites. Now they use a special plan called the VIP, and if you have to ask for the cost, you can't afford it. But <laughs> it's not as simple as WordPress.com is blogs and simple sites, and WordPress.org is complicated sites. WordPress.com can be used to make a fully featured, high-powered, enterprise-level site. Uh, if you wanted to make an online store, would you go know, with .com or If you wanted to make an online store with shopping, I would probably go with uh, .org, simply because you've got the flexibility to install things like WooCommerce. But you can often install those things with uh, WordPress.com as well if you pay extra money. So it comes down to comparing the, the features and the costs. I had a question. Okay, so I've just recently started my website last month. Right. And um, so I left HostGator as my my uh, host. Right. And then I did the install through them. Yeah. So this would be a WordPress. Uh, and, then I had, and then I had a GoDaddy domain that I. Right. So I'm obviously an org. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So with org versus com, dot com, like I would have to pay for services where with dot org, I'm creating it essentially myself, right? In a lot of cases, yes. Now, can I can I purchase a theme and then like add plugins through org? Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. All right. What we're gonna do is. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of uh, details about how to choose your site, pros and uh, how to choose your type, pros and cons of uh, different features. Yes. Uh, this is probably a simple question, but if you have a domain name that's a .com domain name, can you use it on WordPress.org? Yes, you can. You can use it on both. If you are using WordPress.org, which means you're going through a hosting company, you have to have your own domain name. That's the only way to find the site. If you're using WordPress.com, you have the option of using your own domain name. We'll look at uh, some of the details. Before I get into that, though, I want to stress the importance of knowing which one you have, uh, both before you buy and uh, after you're set up as well. There's an awful lot of online help for using WordPress. but some of it is addressed to WordPress.com, some of it is addressed to WordPress.org. <coughs> Most of the time that's okay. The core software, WordPress software, is the same, regardless of whether you're looking at it through a .com organization or a .org type of, uh, site. Features like uh, adding a link, making a link open in a new tab, adding a page, these are done the same way regardless of what type of WordPress you have. When you start getting into more advanced features, there's different differences. Uh, for example, uh, an image map. This is a picture where if you click in different areas of the picture, different things happen, different links open. If you're using WordPress.org, you would probably do that with a plugin. If you're using WordPress.com, you can't get a plugin to do that you have to do it with HTML. There's instructions online to help you both ways, but you have to know whether you're working with .com or .org to get the right set of instructions. So when you're looking for online help, know whether you're looking for help 
for .com or .org and know whether the instructions that are there apply to wordpress.org or wordpress.com. Same thing if you're talking to someone here. If you have a wordpress.com site, let them know. Uh, that way they can give you advice specific to that type of WordPress. So let's look at uh, the various aspects of both of them in more detail. Well, the first thing is the software. When you're using WordPress.com, all of the software, the core software, updates automatically. You don't need to do anything. You will log into your site, it will tell you it's updated the software. And there are no modifications or plugins. You can't make any, none are going to be made. Now, although WordPress.com doesn't allow you at the basic level to add plugins, it does have some features that are like plugins. And if you're willing to uh, purchase some plans, you do have the option to add plugins. With WordPress.org, they give you the software, but you are responsible for updating your site. It's not hard to do, but it's very important to stay on top of this because uh, security is often uh, an important consideration. You have to keep your site up to date to keep it secure. If you're using WordPress.org, you can modify the core files that make the site operate. That gives you incredible flexibility. But if you make a mistake and the site stops working, you'll have to fix that or hire someone or find someone to fix it for you. With WordPress.org, you can install any plugins you want. You can even create your own plugins, again, if you have the coding skill to do that or if you hire someone to do that for you. But just as you are responsible for the security and the maintenance of the core software, you are also responsible for the security and the maintenance of any modifications and any plugins that are made. And one benefit of having the software on its own is that you can install it locally. You can actually install WordPress software on your home computer and you can run a WordPress site from there. You should not do that to make your site available to the public, but it can be used for testing. If you're working with a large organization and it's critical that the site be tested before it goes live with WordPress.org, you can have a copy of it on your computer, it's completely local, you can do your testing, make sure it works the way you want it to. I have a question, how did, can we talk later about how to do that? Because I don't want to be live to the account, because I'm a work in progress trying to right. learn, but I did set up the SSL and everything on there, so I am, I am live, but there's nothing there other than my menus, and, sure. and, I, and I changed the image of my front page, right, and I just said, have other options besides a, uh, a staging server that may be simpler. Uh, what you can do is restrict the visibility of the pages so that it's only visible if you log in. And that way uh, you can have one public page that sits site under construction. Yeah. Don't have any menu buttons on that page, just have it as a standalone page coming soon or whatever you like on that page. Okay. And the rest of the site can be entirely private. It will be visible to you, but no one else. Under what heading do I go in to do that? Uh, it's somewhere under settings. I have to fish around to be sure. Under but, settings? Okay. Yeah, we can talk about that later. But yeah, that, that, for what you're looking for, that may be a simpler alternative than making a local version. Okay. So I mentioned that WordPress.com includes hosting. It's free up to three gigabytes. And three gigabytes is actually a lot of space, as long as you're not putting videos there, and you can with free WordPress. Um, you can have sites that are hundreds of pages uh, within that three gigabyte space. If you need more space, you can uh, increase that with a payment. There's also no traffic restrictions. Uh, most of us don't have to worry about too much traffic for our website, but if, if that's a concern, there is the, there's no traffic restriction with free WordPress. And they do include um, statistics so that you can see who's coming to your site, what they're reading, uh, how long they stay, and so on. 
When you're using WordPress.org, you're buying the hosting separately. How much you're going to get uh, is going to vary. Depends how much you spend, usually. There may or may not be limits on your traffic. Again, for most of us, that's not a big concern. One thing that can be an important concern is that if you are purchasing your own hosting, you have the option to specify where that computer is physically located. And this is important for some companies. There are some companies that want their website to be in Canada. They want the server, kind of where all the data for that website is stored, to be in Canada. If you need to make that kind of decision, you'll have to go with WordPress.org, purchase hosting from a hosting company that says our servers are located in Canada. May apply to other countries uh, as well. Again, if you need the server to be in a particular area, you'll probably have to purchase a host that can make sure the server is in that area. Now, I mentioned that WordPress.com includes statistics. If you purchase hosting, most likely you're going to get statistics from your hosting company. So that, that's a wash. If you really like the WordPress.com statistics package, you can actually add that to a WordPress.com site. The Jetpack service, which is a big part of WordPress.com, a lot of the extra features, is also available for WordPress.com, or WordPress.org. Any questions on hosting? And as I mentioned before, the third thing you need to make a website work is a domain name. With WordPress.com, a domain name is not required. You can create a site with them, and it'll have the address, whatever you want, within reason, .wordpress.com. If you want to use your own domain name with a WordPress.com site, you can do that. Buying your own domain name is always a good idea. It looks more professional, and it's generally $10 to $20 a year. But if money's tight, you can share their domain name. If you're going to purchase a domain name, you can purchase it from WordPress.com, right within WordPress. There's no need to deal with a separate company for the name, and they'll do the work of associating the domain name with your site. It's not terribly complicated, but it's a couple of extra steps. They'll look after it for you. If, on the other hand, you bought your domain name from a separate company, a domain name registrar, or just some other company that had a good deal on domain names, you can still connect that to your WordPress.com site for a small fee. Now, with uh, WordPress.org, you must buy a domain name, but you're already buying hosting, and a lot of hosting companies include a domain name already. So again, it's a, a bit of a wash. Any questions on domain names? Something else we need to talk about is email. WordPress.com is website software. It does not look after email. Email is handled separately. There are, uh, just as there are web servers that deal with websites, there are email servers that deal with email. WordPress does not include a mail server. Now, if you're using uh, Gmail for your email address or another online mail service, um, you don't need a mail server, so it, it, it doesn't matter to you. You only need a mail server if you have a domain name and you want to send and receive email that uses that domain name. For example, you purchase the domain name halifaxpuppies.ca and you want to be able to send and receive email using the email address sarah at halifaxpuppies.ca. To do that, you're going to need a mail server. If you only want to receive email using a custom domain name, WordPress.com can handle that for you. You've got a custom domain name, WordPress.com will take up to five email addresses with that domain name and forward them to another account. So suppose you've got your email address sarah at Halifax Puppies. That can be used. You'll receive email. WordPress will send it to your Gmail account. 
then you can reply to it using your regular uh, Gmail account, Sarah at Gmail. Yep. Does that come with the regular free WordPress.com hosting, or is that, in, is that evolving upgrades? This would be if you purchased a package that includes a domain name with your site. Okay. If, you, if, you, if you're not using a domain name with your site, you wouldn't be able to use a custom email address. Okay. Unless but, you had your own registered, <coughs> The plans start, uh, I believe, uh, five or six a month, depending how you pay. Right. And you can add a domain name without going through a plan, I believe, at $17, but I don't know if that's still available. Mm -hmm. And that, either way, once you pay to use a custom domain name with your WordPress.com site, that email forwarding is available. Right. Now, the drawback of that email forwarding is you cannot send using the different uh, custom domain email. For that, you need a mail server. Uh, there's a couple of options. Uh, WordPress.com is also able to forward email to a separate email server. For example, when you purchased your domain name, depending who you bought it from and how much you spent, it actually may include an email server. So what happens is uh, somebody wants to see your site using the custom domain name, it goes to WordPress. WordPress shows them your site. Somebody wants to send you email using the custom domain name, it goes to WordPress, WordPress looks at it, says, okay, this is email, I don't deal with this, I'm gonna send it off to this company, which has a mail server. And then you can send and receive your email using your Sarah at HalifaxPuppies.ca. So if your mail hosting is included with your domain name, um, all you need is WordPress.com to forward it, and you have your mail hosting. If you don't have mail hosting included with your domain name, there is an option to purchase it. Uh, WordPress.com has an arrangement with G Suite. It lets you use Gmail with a custom domain name. So there are ways around this. One way or another, you can get email with WordPress.com. There's a couple of different options. Now if you're going with WordPress.org, <coughs> Well, again, you don't have email because email is not part of WordPress. But if you have purchased hosting, most of the time, your hosting plan is going to include a mail server as part of that. And uh, typically, even the most basic plan would include, say, up to 100 email addresses. So if, if that's the case, if you're using WordPress.org and a hosting company, your email is handled entirely through the hosting company. WordPress has nothing to do with it. So a lot of uh, different options on the email. Main thing to be aware of here is no matter which way you go, WordPress isn't handling your email completely, but WordPress can forward your email to look after that. So the ideal setup to go through the uh, Different options. Um, if your domain registration includes an email address or a couple of email addresses, um, for example, I, I have one package where my domain registration includes one email address. I only need one email address, so I have uh, WordPress forward the emails to my domain registrar, which is where my mail server is. Ideal depends how many email addresses you have, that's part of it. And you may already have G Suite through uh, another organization or for another reason, in which case you can take advantage of that. G Suite is a uh, package of features that's basically a premium version of the Google services. So for example, you can have Gmail for free, but you have to use an email address that includes gmail.com. Whereas uh, if you pay them a little extra money, they'll let you use their mail service, but with your own name. So if you, can, you can have a custom domain name, Gmail can still do all the heavy lifting of storing and sending the emails, but with your own domain name. But you'll have to pay to do that. Yeah? Just a quick question on domain naming. With WordPress.com, if I register and connect my domain name through WordPress.com, yeah. in, in future I will grow that as a, as a service. Do I have the authority to repoint my DNS from WordPress.com to wherever I choose to host in the future? Like, am I obligated to keep my domain name on their platform? I'm not sure how that would work, to be honest. Um, 
I, I can say with some degree of confidence that you're you're uh, unlikely to outgrow WordPress, but my um, it's it's certainly easier to get everything from one company. Um, there are advantages to getting your hosting from one company and getting your domain name from another company. Even if you're using WordPress, there is sometimes still benefits to getting your domain name from another company. Um, it's more convenient to get everything from one supplier, but you are kind of more committed to that supplier for future changes. Can you take your domain name from WordPress? Or you are they always going to have ownership of as, as a general rule, uh, if you have your domain name registered with one company, you can change it to another company. And I would assume that applies for getting your domain name away from WordPress as a registrar as well. There's usually quite a, quite a few hoops to jump through because everybody involved wants to make sure that the transfer of the name is legitimate because people don't like their domain names getting stolen. <laughs> but yeah, you could probably arrange to transfer the domain name to a new registrar and it would be the same to, ex to export it from WordPress.com as from any other registrar. Go to the new registrar and then send the codes back and forth. I've done it. It's not that hard. There are hoops. <laughs> Yep, it's, it's trickier, uh, it's certainly trickier if the sites become abandoned and uh, you're not sure who's, uh, who's uh, looking after it now. <coughs> Another thing, uh, thing to consider is backups. With WordPress.com, um, you don't need to make backups. If uh, you want, uh, the data is yours, you can export it at any time, there's a function for that. And if you want to be extra careful, you can purchase a backup service. For WordPress.org, you are completely responsible for the site. If it goes down, it's up to you to restore it. I mentioned that you have to do your own software upgrades. Um, you should take backups before you do a software upgrade when you're using WordPress.org. Now the good news is that if you purchased hosting, there's a good chance that hosting includes some backup provisions. Just one um, question on security and just from over there. Sure. I have a, a WordPress.org site that's uh, got a password protection plugin or a protection plugin, but uh, it's being hit by a whole bunch of spots looking to log in, and it just <coughs> uh, shuts down their IP address. Uh, that's actually not something I can assist you with, sorry. Okay. If you talk to one of the folks at the Happiness Party, they'd know a lot more about that than me. Okay. When it comes to user accounts, uh, if you're going to create a WordPress.com site, you'll need a WordPress.com account. That becomes your login. One account can access many sites. If you find yourself looking after uh, three or four WordPress.com sites, you can use one account to access all of them. With WordPress.org, well, you don't need a WordPress.com account. You might still want to get one, though, to take advantage of some of the features, such as Jetpack. And you will need a separate account for each uh, website that you've set up through web hosting. Themes, as we mentioned before, themes control the appearance of your site. With WordPress.com, there's about 150 free themes and another 200 that you can purchase. And if you purchase a plan, that opens up a few more themes. Most themes have a limited amount of easy customization. You can change the font, you might be able to change a few colors of the colored scheme. If you've got deep pockets, unlimited customization can be purchased. With WordPress.org, the web host usually supplies a few themes, but there are thousands available for free and there are thousands that can be purchased. You can make your own. Some of them have easy customization and that depends entirely on the theme, but there is essentially unlimited customization. Ultimately, you can have any appearance you want with any version if you've got enough money. When it comes to support, with WordPress.com and WordPress.org, there's a large community, folks here today, lots of online support, know which version you have. If you purchase a plan from WordPress.com, 
That's going to include email and chat support. At any time, you can send somebody a question and say, how do I make this feature work? That's not available with WordPress.org. You're relying on the community. You might be able to get some assistance from your web host if there's something with the site not working, but they may not be able to help you with WordPress-specific questions. So there is lots of help available, but uh, if you want the convenience of being able to send off a chat note and say, how do I make a picture smaller? That's available with WordPress.com if you purchase the plan. Something else to consider is advertising. If you've got free WordPress.com, WordPress is going to place ads on your site and it's going to put branding there. If you have tons and tons of traffic, there's revenue share available, but uh, for most of us, that's not an issue. And you cannot run your own ads. You are allowed to do self-promotion. If you're a lawyer, you can tell everyone that you're a lawyer and you have services available. Um, and you can put affiliate links up within reason, but you can't actually run ads, you can't make a lot of money running Google Ads or something like that. If you purchase plans, you have the option to uh, run ads and remove the branding. With WordPress.org, there's no advertising. The branding can be removed, you can run your own ads, you can do whatever you want. You can even run WordPress.com ads and make money off them if you have enough traffic. It's, it's the same either way. This is, uh, there's advertising to bring people to your site. That's separate from advertising on your site. Uh, what you want to have on your site, if it's a WordPress.com site, it has to be a legitimate site that has content. It can't just be pages of ads. So, a question on the time, Alex? Uh, we're just wrapping it up. Now we can do Q&A, but okay, presentation. We're, we're just at 9.30? Yes, it was half hour. Okay, I thought I had 45. Yeah. Nope. 30. I mean, you take another five minutes. It's not okay. a problem. Okay, we'll go through a little quicker here. Um, yeah, I'll wrap it up as quick as I can. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, an issue on content, because there's more to your site than I asked, hopefully. If you're using WordPress.com, mature content must be identified. And uh, certain types of content and certain types of links are prohibited, so read your terms of service. Basically, if you're going to put anything up that you're not sure about, it's probably not allowed. Uh, now, I have some seen some online warnings that say don't use WordPress.com. They will pull your site if it violates the terms of service. Well, but yes, they will. Now, with WordPress.org, as far as WordPress is concerned, you can put whatever you want on your site. But the hosting company is going to have restrictions. So again, read the terms of service. Good rule of thumb, if it's not allowed on WordPress.com, it's probably not going to be allowed on the uh, uh, hosting company site either. Now, I haven't talked much about multi-sites. Most of the time, using a WordPress multi-site is a lot like using a WordPress.com site. But just remember that the terms, conditions, and costs are all set by the owner and operator of that site. For most people, a multi-site doesn't have much advantage over a WordPress.com site, but uh, if you're setting up sites, if you're setting up a site for a franchise, a real estate office, or some other situation where uh, people might have their own sub-sites, then you'd be looking at a WordPress multi-site, and you must use WordPress.org to set up a multi-site. Big question for a lot of people, what's it gonna cost? Well, WordPress.com starts at free, and it goes up to 396 a year for the basic plans. A good place to start is a plan that is $60 a year that will remove ads. It will get you one domain name. Doesn't include email service, but if you need that, you can get it from G Suite for another $60 a year. You may not need it. WordPress.org, the software itself is free, but you need to purchase hosting. And hosting generally starts around $60 a year. That's gonna usually include one domain name, an email server. It might not include a security certificate. 
Security certificates generally start around $40 a year. So there's not a lot of difference in cost. Depends a lot on your requirements. I have a question. Do you have to renew that every year? Yeah. Yeah, that's a monthly uh, charge, and those are based on uh, annual payments for monthly charges. Now, what about if I created it myself through Cloudflare? Do I have to um, renew anything? Or that I'm not sure about. Whatever you're using for WordPress, you'd have to renew annually. So how are you going to make your decision? WordPress.com is easier to set up and maintain. No question there. WordPress.org is more flexible. It allows more features and more appearance options. If you want one-stop shopping and support, you probably want to go with WordPress.com. If you want to set up multiple sites, you need to go with WordPress.org. If you don't have any money, you need to go with WordPress.com. If you need to know your server location or choose your server location, you're going to have to go with WordPress.org and purchase hosting where you know the service server location. If you're not sure, Go with WordPress.com, set it up for free, get started for free. You can add paid services and add features later. And WordPress.com very easily migrates to WordPress.org if you decide you need the full feature and flexibility of that approach. Well, we've had a few questions, but I've got time now for more. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Marcel Arsenal, webpro.com, and what I'm trying to do is have an affiliate marketing type website and also consulting. So with that, would you suggest maybe WordPress.com or WordPress.org or either one? Uh, when you say affiliate marketing, there's going to be a lot of links there? Yeah, basically people uh, click on the link and like doing some blockchain, and I'm not sure about what the best theme for that is, so whether it's... Uh, you know, a certain theme that's going to be set up a template for me that would be installed because right now it's just having a bunch of blogs and I gotta fix that up today. Um, with the links, uh, if you have too many links on there, you may run afoul of WordPress.com's uh, um, content rules on linking. Um, the way it works with affiliate links, let's suppose, for example, that you run a book review site. So each post is a book review, and you have a link to that book on Amazon, and it's an affiliate link. You'll get the, the funds if someone makes a purchase. That's allowed. But if you try and run an online bookstore where you have a page which is my favorite books this month, and then the rest of it is links to Amazon, and they're all affiliate links, that's probably going to run afoul of the terms of content. So if you're going to have a lot of links, you might be looking at that work. Yeah. GDPR requirements, but if you're using WordPress.com, they will give you the options to automatically add the disclaimers that you need for GDPR, as far as the privacy policy and cookies and so on. If you're using WordPress.org, you're a little more on your own there. Now, will WordPress.com do it automatically, or do you have to ask them to do it? Um, what I've seen with WordPress.com is they pop up a little note. In the last couple of weeks, they've been popping up a little note that says uh, something to the effect of you may need this GDPR banner if your site is visible in Europe. Click here. Okay. But in, in North America, you don't need, need that? If your site is visible? only visible in North America, you wouldn't need it. But in most cases, your site is going to be visible worldwide. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a good idea to have that European banner on and the GDPR on. Um, even if you're not specifically marketing there. Do you have time for more questions? Absolutely. Any other? Yeah. Sir? Uh, I was just uh, wondering if you have uh, received a, a website that has a particular theme. And I believe we're using the .org. Yeah. And is it difficult to switch over to another theme if you decide, oh, yeah, this is too cumbersome? No, it's actually very easy to switch themes. Um, you can, 
preview themes in a lot of cases. Um, I often tell people don't settle on a theme until you've got your content in because you often can't determine exactly what the site is going to look like until you've got your content there. Then pull up and see how it looks in the theme, see if the menu is where you want it to be, and if it isn't, just select a different theme. It's usually just a matter of minutes. Now what will happen if you switch from one theme to another, maybe one theme supports three menus and the next theme only supports two menus, you see one of your menus disappear. But really the only way to get a theme that you're happy with is to have content in your site, apply the theme, see what it looks like, see what the modifications and settings for that theme are, then uh, be happy with that one or try a different one. Yes? Yeah, the, the, the themes are, a small number of themes are supplied by your host. The rest of them you can obtain from WordPress or from third party suppliers. So where in WordPress do I go? Um, you'd actually go to the wordpress.org site and fish down that way. Best way to do it would be to talk to one of the folks at the Happiness Card, they can show you where to retrieve them from. WordPress um, has some themes that they approve. There's other themes that for whatever reason aren't available through their site, but available separately. There's lots of companies out there that make themes. So you may be able to just, you know, Google search word themes, but talk to one of the folks at the Happiness Bar about the best way to get them. the Dawn website, there is a tab that says themes, I think, or? I've never looked for one there. That, that's where I go to start looking. That's why I say talk to those folks. They'd be able to direct you to them. I, I stay away from custom themes myself. That's my personal thing. Just one other question. On Sorry, the uh, gentleman in the back had a question. Yeah, that, that can be tricky sometimes if you're using complex themes. And again, my, myself, I stay away from complex themes. I like it simple. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering, is Wix better than WordPress, or because I hear, oh, Wix is so easy, to but, you know, comment on that, and also, Bluehost, is that a good hosting site? Okay, um, i got to be careful what I say, because yeah, there's a red curve. We don't have the hosting conversation here, we did have a uh, conversation a couple, like a couple months ago now. Uh, hosting is a very sensitive conversation. We do have a lot of different sponsors for hosts, so I would like to table that. If you want to ask people's opinions separately, everybody will have a different opinion, a different experience. Uh, we don't talk about hosting. Okay. Yeah, it's a heated, controversial. It's like talking about Trump. Like, and then, uh, there are two things that two rules to WordCamp. We don't talk about Trump. We don't talk about hosting. <laughs> Just to answer your question about. Uh, 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 one of the WordPress's competitors. Again, there's not a lot I can say there, but um, there's no denying that WordPress has a little bit of a learning curve. But uh, I'm, in my experience, I like the flexibility. So I, I recommend it. You recommend WordPress? You yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've switched to WordPress in 2012. Um, as, as I mentioned, I started out with Notepad. Um, Decades ago, I learned Greenweaver and the more complex tools like that. I found them more than I needed. I've always been a web hobbyist, not a developer. I use the internet. I'm not interested in developing fancy sites. Uh, so I went with Microsoft Front Page, which serious web developers sneer at. Fine. Um, and then Expression Web, when Microsoft stopped supporting Expression Web, I switched to WordPress and uh, not looking back, very happy with it. One of the questions on the themes, if you have, whether you have two themes or a thousand themes, if you were to switch from one theme to another, it's already a site full of content. And as you said, some of the content, maybe the menus are missing. If you switch back, those menus still reappear? Not necessarily, no. You'd be starting fresh. You're not going to lose any of the content that you've created, your pages, your photos, none of that will be touched, but how they display and some of the navigational items may be affected. You can do live previews too, though. Yeah, you don't actually have to commit. There's a preview option when you're testing a different theme. Thank you. All right, perfect.